Okay guys, so today I'm gonna to be making something simple and kind of complicated at the same time. So I'm gonna be making um, broccoli Alfredo with fresh Alfredo sauce. Um, I don't have Alfredo noodles, so I'm gonna be using spaghetti, but I have a couple pans going, so let's get started there because this is kind of the first thing you need to do. So I have a pot of boiling water going, it's about four quarts. Then over here to steam my broccoli, I have my um, water going for that. And then I'm gonna put my broccoli in there so I can steam it, it's fresh broccoli. And then this is where I'm gonna make my Alfredo sauce. And then let me show you what we need to make so this recipe. any basic home Alfredo sauce has a couple components and it's pretty much just these three things. It's milk, I typically use whole milk. You can use almond milk if you want to. You can use any kind of milk, but you need milk. Then it has butter. I always use unsalted because I put salt into the sauce. And then it has flour and some type of cheese. I'm gonna use Parmesan and mozzarella that I have in the fridge that I'm gonna cut up. Then you're gonna need some Italian seasoning. I just used a little bit of that. Some kosher salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. And then this is the spaghetti that I'm using today. This is the brand that I got. Um, really good brand, just an Italian brand. I like this one. And then I have my broccoli over here soaking in white vinegar. This is super good to wash your vegetables. So just make sure that you guys always do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the broccoli and then we're gonna start making the sauce. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and prep my broccoli. So this has been washed, soaked in vinegar, and rewashed again. So the first thing I always like to do is I like to pick off these things right here, these longer ones. And then I like to go in with this tool and just skim it down. Like that. This kind of gets rid of anything and then that way you can use the bottom of the broccoli. And then I always cut off the end because it's kind of dirty. Toss that over there. And then we can start using our broccoli. All right, so then what I do is I just cut these longer edges off. And this is an edible piece where you could easily pick it up with a fork. So we're gonna use that. And then I'm gonna cut the stem and cut it like this and like this. You can still use the core of the broccoli. It's still really healthy, it's still really good, but just make sure that you always like skin it the way that I did, because it is tougher, and also you want to get all of those germs off. So do that. And then for how I cut my broccoli, I just go straight down the middle like that, and then it comes off like this, and then you can just cut it into little trees. If you want to cut it smaller, you totally can. I like it a little bit bigger for this dish though. So like that is how it's gonna be. And also if you don't wanna use the bottom of the broccoli for this, you don't have to. You could save it for like a soup or a smoothie or whatever you wanna do. I'm probably not gonna use all the stems either. I'll probably only use a couple. And then the reason why I steam the broccoli, I know a lot of people cook their broccoli inside of the pasta water. Um, you don't necessarily wanna do that because there's starch in there and you kind of, you're cooking that out of the pasta. So you don't wanna put it back into your body. So that's why I like a lot of those one pan recipes. They don't come out tasting as good as you think they would look <laughs> because it's not like you're cooking it in that gross pasta water. So I'm just gonna go ahead and repeat this process and then I'll show you guys how I put my broccoli in the steamer. Okay, so I just went ahead and finished chopping my broccoli. This is what it looks like and this is about the size it is. 
probably say like half the size of a human finger. <laughs> So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the steamer and I'll show you guys how I do that. Okay guys, so basically I just put the broccoli on the steamer and then I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in and it'll be done. I'm going to go ahead and put my pasta in and then we will start our sauce. Okay, so everything's coming along really nicely. For this recipe, when you guys make it, make sure that you make your broccoli and pasta first and your Alfredo sauce last because... What's going to happen is you're going to combine everything together and you want to make sure that you have both of those ingredients ready so that you can actually mix it with the alfredo so we're almost done we're about six minutes in and with the broccoli you want to cook it um i guess the simplest way i could say is al dente you don't want to make it all the way through to cook with the broccoli because you don't want to have it so soft that it's going to break when you put it inside the pasta and the alfredo mixture but you want it strong enough where it can stand alone um, on itself when you pick it up with your fork. The other thing that I want to mention that I didn't know before is that when you're steaming your broccoli, one, you typically always want to keep it covered, which I'm just lifting it up to show you guys, um, and two, don't put any seasoning in there because the whole point of steaming the broccoli is to one, kind of mold it into whatever you want, to, want it to do after you're done steaming it, and the other part of it is it's a really healthy method of cooking, so just kind of leave it as is. Don't throw any salt in there. It'll interrupt the steaming process and just let it cook. Typically, broccoli takes anywhere from six to seven minutes to steam fully, depending on how many you have in there. I only have a couple of rods, so it shouldn't take that long. And right now, I'm in about the six minute mark and we're almost done. Okay, so I just went ahead and drained my pasta and I'm gonna drop two pads of butter in this pot. This is literally just so that the pasta doesn't stick to the bottom because the pot is still really warm and I'm going to put it back in there. And then I'm going to drain my broccoli and I am going to put it in this pot also. Okay, so I just drained my broccoli and I'm just going to put it in with the pasta. It's still super steamy, so just leave it uncovered until we pour in our Alfredo. Okay guys, so unlike every other recipe I make, this actually has amounts that you need to be mindful of and that you need to use or it's not going to turn out good so into a hot pan i have mine on medium heat we're going to do three tabs of butter okay what we're going to do is let those melt completely and then we are going to take two tablespoons of flour and we are going to mix the butter and the flour together until well combined after that we're going to pour in milk we're going to wait until that has thickened up and then we're gonna add our seasonings, and then we're gonna add our cheese. This is kind of like a pretty methodical process. Normally I don't abide by like cooking rules like this, but this is actually something where like when you're making a roux, it's really important to follow the instructions properly. So this is almost melted, and then I'll come back to you guys when it's melted and we'll put in our milk. All right, so when you get it to about here, so basically all of our butter is melted, you wanna take two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. So here's one, and here is two. And you wanna mix this all together. So I know that that doesn't look like a lot, but flour thickens up so heavily, especially when it's in butter. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix this until well combined, and then what you're gonna notice is there's gonna be having these little chunks that are gonna form, okay? And if it seems a little, like not as lumpy as you want, you can add a little bit more flour, but this is good for now. So I have it about here. You wanna keep this on the heat until it thickens up just enough, which I'll stay with you guys because it's kind of just a timing process to watch it. I'm gonna put a little bit more flour in there. So that was two tablespoons. I'm probably gonna do another half of a tablespoon. So just like that. And mix this up. Because what you're really looking for is like, you're kind of looking for it to be a little chunky. So I'm gonna add maybe like another half of a tablespoon so now we're at three tablespoons so yeah this is what you want see how it's kind of clumping up there that's what you're looking for and then you're going to add your milk you don't necessarily want it to be smooth you want the smoothing process to happen when you actually add your milk so it's a little bit more chunky a little bit more clumpy now we're going to go ahead and add our milk so let me grab our milk to this we're going to add two cups of milk so typically for a pasta, so that's one. And before we add our second cup, we're gonna go ahead and mix this up 
until well combined just like that and again what you're looking for is that thickness just like that and why you want to use a whisk is because see how it's kind of clumping up a little bit there and this is also where you want to turn the heat down guys so I put my heat down to low this is why you want to whisk so that you can get in there and you can get all of those clumps out and get your Alfredo sauce really, really nice. And the longer that it's in here, the longer that it's going to thicken up. So yeah, anyway, so typically two cups of milk will cover an entire pound of pasta. Um, if you have pasta that's like a little bit bigger or maybe it just doesn't seem like enough, you can go ahead and you can add um, more milk. But the rule of thumb is one tablespoon of flour per one cup of milk. So that's our second cup of milk. We're just gonna go ahead and mix this a little bit more. And I'm going to let this thicken up and then I'll pop back in with you guys once I have a little bit thicker of consistency. Okay guys, so I did add one more tablespoon of flour. So that's four tablespoons of flour all together, two cups of milk, three tablespoons of butter, and I turn the heat back up to high. Now what you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and put your cheese in. So I am doing a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then I'm gonna do some mozzarella cheese also. And you don't wanna put your mixture on the heat so high that it burns, so stay in between middle and low. And then I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in. like that and it takes a while for this to actually thicken up you guys but I promise it will so don't add a ton of flour right away because what you'll end up with is something that's yeah see how thick it's getting now what you'll add up with what you'll end up with is something extremely thick that you won't even be able to like serve or work with so just take it super super easy let it work let it do it let it do its thing see how we're getting thicker already it's been about five minutes that I've had this on the stove. Now is the time when I'm gonna add my salt, my garlic powder, and my pepper. So let me go grab that really quick. All right, so I like a lot of pepper, so I'm gonna do just as much fresh ground pepper, like two or three tablespoons. And then for garlic powder, I'm going to do, I typically like to do it like this and then mix it in. And then for salt, I always do like a tablespoon. So just about that much. Mix it in there. And then this is the part where, see how thick it got guys? It's been sitting here for literally six minutes and it's starting to thicken up like a nice cheese. It's so good but it's so cheap to make your Alfredo sauce at home. I know it takes a little bit of time, but once you get used to doing it, it tastes so much better than getting it at the store. We're literally making garlic Alfredo sauce right now, and it's one, pretty easy, and two, it's so much healthier than getting it. Yeah, see, remember when I told you guys about how it's gonna thicken up on you out of nowhere? It just did. All right, so see how thick it's getting? It's like so thick and beautiful. So I'm gonna go grab my mozzarella cheese so that it can melt into my sauce. And I will add that. Look at that. It's so thick and creamy. How beautiful. I'm gonna give it a good wix before I add the cheese. And you always wanna make sure that you're constantly wicks whisking the mix because if you don't it's going to stick to the bottom Just like that. and I still have my heat on medium high in between medium and in between um, low sorry Just like that. So I'm gonna get my mozzarella in the left. All right, so it's starting to bubble and I'm just gonna go ahead and add my cut up mozzarella cheese. 
and mix it in. And look how thick that's getting now. So good. Absolutely perfect. So I will probably leave it on here just long enough so that the mozzarella melts and then after it melts I'll go ahead and take it off. And I'm just using fresh mozzarella, fresh pulled mozzarella, that's all I'm using. Just like that. And you don't have to add mozzarella guys if you just want to keep with the parmesan and you're not like a big cheese person, just don't add it, you know? But look how thick that got. Oh, so cheesy and beautiful. Alright, so now that I'm about here with my sauce, see how cheesy and gooey and perfect? I'm going to go ahead and pour it into our mixture. All right guys, so the Alfredo sauce is done, but I just want to show you the consistency before I pour it in. Look at how thick and nice that is. It's perfect. Cheesy, thick, nice. This is what you're looking for when you make Alfredo. All right, so we're just gonna pour this in. And just make sure you get all of that cheesy goodness in there. So then you're going to want to go ahead and mix everything together and because we put the butter in there earlier, the pasta is not going to stick. So just go ahead and mix until well combined. And how perfect does that look? And that's it. And then you literally just mix to garnish. And then I always just use a little bit of Italian seasoning to put on the top, make it look pretty. Just like that. And you're done. I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Please comment and like below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. But look at this though. Enjoy, guys.